Another HasLabs in the books. Another HasLabs failed to fully fund, meaning backers didn't get everything that they paid for. At this point, do we even still need tiers? And if so, is there a better way to get it done? What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files. If you were like me, you were spending probably too much time on Hasbro Pulse yesterday, checking out the progress of the Star Wars Vintage Collection Moss Eisley Cantina set. For a long time in this project, it was 30 days, not 45 like some of the other ones. It had not reached this 8,000 backer mark to get started, to get moved into production. And it was really close. And it was like, wow, is this thing actually not going to get funded? Eventually, it did, probably within the last five days. Then it was a matter of, all right, well, what's going to happen next? With the initial 8,000 backers, that meant everybody got to get woo her. He's all in check. He's got a shotgun. He's got his chest hairs. He's got lots and lots of cups. And he's not afraid to discriminate against your droids. We got him. We also got the Tonica sisters, Brie and Nikki. Sorry, Brie and Senna Tonica, not the Bellas. So we got them chilling at the side of the bar. They're swiping left, figuring out who they're going to roll home with tonight. And then it was a matter of how many of these tiers, how many of these other characters are we going to get with this set? So we got 14,000. So that means we got a few of these guys left, 14,737 backers to be precise. So that meant who we got next, 11,000 took us to this guy, Greedo. Clearly a need for everybody who didn't have a Greedo figure in their collection already. Although I kind of feel like if you're a vintage collection collector for a while, you probably have a Greedo figure. This one looks really nice. Great detailing. He's covered. And then two hours to go. It was still underneath this threshold to get those 14,000 backers to get the next figure in the set. That was neighbor Leeds. We did get him knocked out. I say we in the general sense because I was pulling for everybody to get everything they backed with this thing. He looks cool. Again, he was released already. And that meant there's another threshold, another 3,000 jump to get the third figure in the tiers. That was Ariel Scholes. He did not get back. So, of course, everyone who supported this project, whether you got the standard version, whether you got the deluxe one, you're not going to get old Nabram. And that's kind of unfortunate because he looks really cool and a really nice looking addition to this cantina set. He came with a blaster and a cup. We might not ever see him because this is a tricky one because we've seen the Damien Hellstrom figure release well, just revealed recently. Let's try that tongue twister again. Hasbro's not afraid to put out failed figures from a HasLab back out eventually in play. So we've seen him. But with old Ariel here, are we going to get another chance? Are collectors, VTC collectors, going to get a shot at him? Because the whole avenue to get him did get funded. They needed 8,000 backers. They got 14 and some change. But not the 17,000 needed to get him. Now, if you were back in this project, I got to assume and figure that you wanted all the figures that were laid out. And I always kind of wonder, is it really the fault of the backers who supported this project to not get that third tier figure or whatever? I mean, it's not like it's on them. They did their part. They held up their end. I'm putting down 499. I'm putting 399 down so I can get this thing. I've done my part. I can't summon up 3,000 more backers just to get this other figure I want. But this isn't the first time we've seen a HasLab get funded without meeting all of those stretch goals and kind of leaving them in the dust like a Thanos snap came through. And of course, you know, the most recent one from last year, the infamous Giant Man Marvel Legends one. Now, this is another that seemed really close, like maybe it's never going to get funded. It needed 10000 and it had a cheaper you know, price point, $199. That was reasonable not crazy like a 350 fifty dollar car and then it got thirteen thousand eight hundred and eighty nine total backers by the time it was all said and done it really seemed like had this has lab continued for like another hour maybe another two hours it would have reached the final threshold for that last year 
with 13,889, we got the 12,000 needed to get the zombie giant, man. I didn't care about because he doesn't fit with these MCU figures, but maybe a more interesting one, one that we would have wanted is the secret invasion scroll head. And he was 111 backers shy of getting completed. That one kind of stings because not so much because, oh man, I really wanted that tier, but it was so close. I mean, you're not going to win a showcase showdown with that differential, but it was way closer than thousands and thousands of backers. And with that scroll head, I kind of felt like Hasbro could have extended something just to give backers people who'd already said, hey, I want this thing. I put down my 199. Give them the option to just get it. Maybe I charge an extra 10 bucks for it. Or just like, hey, you guys want it already. So we're going to throw this in just because. And we all know Hasbro's a business. They got to get their money even out of 199.99 figure. Yes, yeah, so we still got to pay for that scroll head. But I did think it was weird that it's just, sorry, boys, you didn't get enough support. Everybody who backed it, including yours truly, doesn't get all the things that you would have gotten if there were so many people who backed it. And I know that's part of the whole deal with these crowdfunding efforts. It's certainly not the first time where a tier hasn't been reached. Mattel has that same issue on their end with the attorney one. But did kind of feel like this was so close. I mean, there's some that are just like so far on the distance that it didn't even count, didn't even matter. But this one being under a thousand, being under 500 backers needed really seemed like there was enough almost interest in there to get that final piece, but we didn't get it. So anyway, that was not the only one. Let's go to the G.I. Joe Sky Striker. This one's a little bit different. Not quite as closely contested between the tiers, but it is another one that we can point to where not all the tiers got reached. This one was a little bit more in terms of what Hasbro wanted. It needed 10,000 backers, pretty much that basic standard starting point for these deals. It got 15,035 backers. So that's really not bad considering, you know, Giant Man, was, which I think was cheaper than the Sky Striker had less backers when it was all said and done. This one had some major uh, thresholds and tiers. The first one was at 13,000. So that seems like a lot for a G.I. Joe O-ring set. And it got 13. So we got Scarlet and her kind of Glinda influence color scheme. Ironic because we'd see Glinda pop up later. But that meant there were two tiers we didn't get. And 16,000, that meant everybody failed to get Night Force Ripcord. And then, also ironic as we see him again, but then there was one I think people probably would have wanted a little bit sooner than maybe Glenda Scarlet or Night Force Ripcord. It's ketchup and mustard. The pit crew in their O-ring, hey, land the Sky Striker on down, bring it here. And I feel like these are two unique, interesting figures that war collectors probably would have preferred to get to add to their collection as opposed to this really boring, really dull version of Ripcord or even this version of Scarlet. And that kind of leads me to the thought of maybe Hasbro, Mattel, whoever else wants to do a crowdfund could put it up to a vote. Like, hey, I mentioned here's ways that they can improve their, their Haslabs, their crowdfunding efforts. I had mentioned polls, but maybe... Just the order of the tiers would be something that they could do. That would be really easy, especially in the case of just, hey, which order do you want to see these figures? So for that Sky Striker one, I'll just pull that up one more time. You go, all right. So instead of having Scarlet, the unlock number one, let's get Ketchup and Mustard. Let's move them up here. Let's get them that 13,000 backer mark. And I know I get it. The whole point is you want as many backers as possible. I know some of y'all are going to go, no, dummy. This is the whole thing. You make the most desirable the last one. But it didn't get funded. So, you know, I don't know who's dumb in this situation. Me, Hasbro, or the backers who were hoping that it would reach this full threshold. But I think if you were to do a, a poll, just go, hey, rank your tiers in the order which you'd like to receive them. And maybe give them some credence at that point. or do a deal where you guys back it, then you get to vote on it. So during the process, people who are backing can see it in live time 
or just a weekly update. Right now, it looks like Ketchup and Mustard are in the lead for the first unlock. And you can still put it out there, make it here, all the options. And so everything's on the table. And maybe Ripcord is the second tier again. And Scarlet's the last, the least desirable one. But this way, I think it's a little bit fair. And that way, everyone can kind of get what they really want. Because this one, I know these are two figures, but there's no difference in that point between these two. You see that the first unlock is 13,000 backers. That's up 3,000 from the initial funding point. But then we get 16,000. These guys were only 2,000 more from Ripcord. So there's a kind of a thing where, yeah, maybe they considered they may not reach this point, this mark. But I just think if you had had a poll, make it so everybody could vote. Everyone wants you back. It can't be a thing of, well, I would back it if, no, no, you got to put your money, your back and where your mouth is in this case, and not just say, hypothetically, I'm never going to get this thing anyway, but this is what I would prefer. As soon as you put your, I am backing this project, put me down for it, then you get to vote on which tier you want to see come out first. And that way in the live time voting and people are going, or just your weekly updates, oh man, I want to back this thing. But the one, the poll that I want to see or the figure, the tier I want to see move up is a little bit behind. I'm going to put my vote in there and maybe I can get that one first. Maybe that's an idea that they could implement just because we don't want to see tiers that people wanted. We don't want to keep seeing these situations where we get our Ariel Schultz. I don't even know how I'm pronouncing this guy's name. He's just left behind and he's the one that maybe collectors would have preferred to see over yet another Greedo or neighboring leads. So you got that. And then of course, for sure, I would have preferred to have seen the scroll head because I could put some scrolls together. We've got them as opposed to this zombie head that does not match up with anything else. We've got MCU versions of Captain America, Iron Man, and Scarlet Witch. And this classic skewing giant man does not fit in with them at all. But a scroll, scroll cam. And that kind of led me to another thought. There's another way to do this crowdfunding deal. And one that I think as we're seeing more and more crowdfunds not get funded all the way, maybe this is the approach that kind of makes more sense now. And I'm talking about Ramen Racer with their, their racer. Ramen Toys with the Ramen Racer. There you go. I'll say it right now. And you see the base price of it. It's $250. Yeah, reasonable. Not, not expensive not super cheap, kind of in line. Okay, cool. And this is your base price. You can buy it with shop pay, do uh, four easy payments or whatever. And, you know, you can't do anything with it right now to go to do that breakdown any longer. But you got this, and this is, this is what comes with that, your standard racer. And for everybody who missed out on the engine of vengeance, it was like, yes, please make that happen. Even threw in a Robbie Rez skull head, just for you too. But here's what was interesting, I thought. And they broke it down. Here's the ramen racer models and packs explained. And they just showed you all this stuff. So here, the base model, graphite black. That's this one that popped up originally. Then you got these interchange packs, which I think is really the way to go. Maybe the future of tiers where you pay for the extras you want to see thrown in to your crowdfunding projects. And ironically, I can't find these in on Big Bad. I can't find them on Ramen's website, but Big Bad Toy Store did have them. This interchange pack, 20 bucks, it gives you a hood, hood with cutout. Then you've got an add-on supercharger, interchangeable rims. You've got a hood with the air scoop. And then you've got an interchangeable tail light. And then you've got the front grill that's different. So you can kit out this thing the way you want. Granted, it's going to increase the price point. But I like this because it's an option. I don't want this and I'm not paying for it. So, you know, Hasbro, their engine of vengeance threw everything on there and it's 350. But if you had an option to go, I don't need these rims, I'll take $20 off the price of it. And I think maybe this a la carte approach might work a little bit better. So I don't want this tier figure, but I do want these other three. Maybe you can pay for them that way. And then here's another addition to this set. And this is the Inferno pack. And this is just, you throw it on the wheels and you've got your 
Hellfire, not Hellfire. And I just think that was another way to do this thing. I don't know why that page was going like that. But here you go. So here's what you could do. Let's not play this video. And you can just run the deal. So you can see they've got Blade here. I guess they don't have the Ghost Rider. But here's how it looks. The base model plus the interchange pack. So this is what it looks like. It's your default. But here's what it will look like if you threw in that $20 additional add-on kit. I think that is really a great way for them to go. And maybe for, say, this year's HasLab. Okay, for, for Marvel Legends. Let's say Fing Fang Foom is the choice. And let's say he's like uh, $200. And then, all right, well, what do you include with the dragon? Who knows? Why not say three figures? And again, you could do the polls. All right, which one of these do you want to see? Tier one. Here's the figure you get at 14,000. Here's the figure you get at 17. Here's the figure you get at 20,000. You decide, you choose which one is number one. I mean, we see it with the, with the packages for Giant Man. Maybe somebody wanted that, that third option. And oh, no, I'm not going to get it. But it's, it's, it's a fair way to do it with the, with the poll, with a vote. And only the people who backed it were able to cast their vote for it. I think you could do the same thing with tier figures or do the ramen toy model where you just have your standard base and then you make the collectors pay for more. And we've even seen this just this year with what they did with the cantina. It wasn't a thing of, hey, I want to pay for the deluxe version. No, they were like, all right, you don't need to get that, which you can do. Of course, the pricing's gone now. You could pay $499 and get the full deluxe set, or you can just pay for the standard one at $399 and you're all good. There's nothing else to pay for it. All the pictures and all that cool stuff is gone. So let's see if I can pull this up real fast and just show you the difference between the two. Of course not, because I wanted to do that. Uh, of course. Why is it always so hard when I'm trying to show stuff? All right. Anyway. I think this is a good way that Hasbro, the Mattel can do these Has Labs, these crowdfunding efforts with the tiers going forward. Because I don't think people who are backing, investing in these things, because they're not cheap. You're at least spending $200 on it. And for me, you know, I didn't care about the scroll head, but having the option between the two, I certainly would pick the, the scroll head over the over the zombie one. And I think if you incorporate a little bit of voting into the measure, I think collectors would appreciate that or just go, you decide what add-ons you want to buy. And that way, just like the cantina, you can keep building more and more into the cost. It's not costing Hasbro anything. They've already designed it. But you, the purchaser, the customer, the collector can decide, yeah, I want all this stuff and I'm going to pay an extra hundred dollars for it as opposed to them baking that hundred dollars worth of goodness in there and maybe only delivering 50 or 75 dollars what do you guys think should they include some tier options some tier purchase options maybe making it up to a vote or should they just stop doing has labs altogether as always thank you so much for watching this episode of Lyle's figure files has been filed